Today, we test the first ever survival air rifle. What I've got here is the Black Bunker BM-8. And I've spent the last week with this rifle, and I'm gonna tell you the pros and the cons, the good and the bad, the likes and the dislikes of this rifle. Now, the first thing that I need to uh, say is the fact that I've got a lovely little handle that I can carry this rifle with. This, uh, from, from sort of side to side, we've got about 40 centimeters. So, you know, if, if I'm honest, this is not the type of thing that I'm gonna carry with me three days in the bush. I, I don't see myself sort of walking around with this, you know, as I'm lost in the bush or as I'm lost in, uh, on a trail, as an example. But I, what I will definitely do with this is the fact that I can pack it in my backpack. So it easily fits within my backpack. So from that perspective, it makes it very, very easy to use. Now, in the middle of this rifle, I've got an emergency kit, which is what you see here. Now, when I saw this emergency kit, it made me think, what all would I personally put in that emergency kit if I got stuck in the felt? And I'm gonna share that with you today before we actually start looking at the rifle itself. So let's just put the rifle there for a second and let's look at my emergency kit. So what I'm gonna do is let's just go and open it and I'll take you through my thought process. Let's just turn, turn it, around it around there for, there for a, second. a second. I'll take, I'll take you, you through, through my, my thought, thought process. process. Now, now, the first, the first thing, thing that, that I've got, got here is obviously I've got, got a set of pallets. It will be, be silly, silly to take my air rifle, my survival air rifle out, out there and, and not have pallets to shoot my dinner, dinner or my or lunch, lunch for that matter. matter. I've, I've also, also got, got my rape whistle. You know, you never know when the bear chooses you. So so I've got my little rape whistle. I've also got a condom, a condom just, just in, in case, case she, she doesn't, doesn't choose, choose the bear, the bear. You, you never know, know. So, so i've got, got that, that. Um, I've, I've also got, got some panado you know you, you know, never you know when you need to take, take a headache or a way headache, headache. So, so yeah, yeah. So, so i've got, got some panado and, and then the most important thing there's going to be times where we need to stop the bleed now in order to do that i've got some tampons now for those of you who know um, this, this is what, is what we're, we're going, going to use to stop, stop the bleed. The bleed. And, and I've, I've also got, got some plasters. plasters. This, this happens, happens to be, be um, what, what, what is, what is this little girl's, girl's name? name? I can't, I can't remember. remember. But obviously, but obviously I've, I've got, got some quality, quality plasters, plasters again here, here to stop, stop the bleed. The bleed. I, also I also have, have some Zamba. You can't go anywhere without your Zamba. So obviously I've got that. And, and then, then I've got, got an emergency, emergency little, little oven, oven that, that I can, can put, put my food, food on. on. I've, I've got, got a fire, fire starter. starter. And, and lastly, I've, I've also got, got a sharpener. sharpener. So, that's so that's really, really what, what my, my kit, kit, my my kit, kit consists, consists of. of. So let's just close this for a second. I'm going to move it to the right and let's see why we use these different components in a specific way. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and open my little little fire starter my little oven here and you might wonder what the hell am i going to do with the sharpener so there's two reasons i've got the sharpener the first one is i can take wood and i can make little starter wood sections that i'm going to use to start this fire so let's just go and put that on top of our little oven I'm sure you can see on the second camera what this looks like as well. So obviously I can go and get, now, now this will obviously start a lot easier or start a fire a lot easier. A second benefit of that is the fact that I've obviously now got a fork as well. Um, I would have said that this could be a spear, but we don't need a spear because we've got, we've got a bayonet. And I'm gonna show you what that, that looks like in a bit as well. So that's the first reason that we've got the sharpener. The second reason is 
The sharpener is made from magnesium. So I can scrape off some of that magnesium and you'll see that the sparks takes to the magnesium. As I bring it to the bottom there. Now obviously I'll take quite a bit of the magnesium off in order to start this fire. Unfortunately you can see at the bottom of my block there there's a lot of my fire startering components. I've also got like a little fire starter block here. So I might just go and put that on there. And let's see if my plan is going to work. Because obviously it doesn't help we shoot a squirrel, we shoot a dove, we shoot a duck, um, and we can't heat it to eat it. So let's see if this ultimately works. shit ton longer to start. I'm just going to put it on here because obviously I'm, I'm scared I'm going to hit my hand there. So let's just try this. They make it look so easy in the movies. Exercise. Let's just see if I take, if I take this little cloth and I just put that on there if I can get an accelerator going. Yes! Finally! I did it! Okay, so, <laughs> so I've made my fire and now obviously I can cook my duck. So that's really where we're going to start with the survival part. I just wanted to show you what I carry in my kit. And now we're going to the rifle. Okay, now to the main part of the review. So we spoke about the fact that this is a survival rifle and the fact that we can actually go and collapse it into this 40 centimeter collapsible rifle. So let's go and have a look at the different components. The first thing is, as this rifle is collapsed, I've got this plastic cover that covers my barrel um, on both ends. So obviously I'm going to load my pellet in here. I don't want that to get rusted, especially if I fall in the river, I fall in the water as I'm trying to survive in the wilderness. So I've got that cover there. Now what I'm going to do is I've got a little lever just inside the handle. I'm going to release that lever and open up the rifle. So I'm just going to go and take this emergency kit out. I'm going to put it on the side there. Now the first thing, when I look at this rifle, I'm just going to go and click in the buttstock. The second component is that I've got a little lever here that is hanging loose. So when I go and close this up, I'm going to put that lever in there and on the right hand side, I've got a lever here that allows me to lock the rifle in place. Now, as soon as I select that lock, you'll feel that this becomes a completely different rifle. Immediately, this is no longer just a collapsible rifle. This is an extremely accurate piece of equipment. Now, I, I showed some videos of this rifle to some of my friends long before I did the review. I might even include some of those video uh, snippets in here as well and I might even include some of the comments that some of my friends made when they saw this rifle before we actually started testing it. I also at this point want to say thank you so much to the guys from Vector Optics uh, Africa that lent me this little red dot that I used in order to shoot different targets um, and get the rifle set up. Now let's look at the different components. I'm just going to go and take the rifle and slot it in here. And let's just speak about it for a second. Now the more I played with this rifle, 
the more I found small little things that I thought was so well designed, so well thought of. So let's just have a look at what those little things are. Now, the first thing is the fact that I've got a full Picatinny ring, uh, oh, sorry, full Picatinny rail on top of the rifle, which means that I can easily fit things like red dots. Um, I even had a Hawk scope fitted on here in order to do some of the recordings that you'll see in just a second as well. So lovely the fact that it's got a Picatinny rail, um, which is easy to mount and ultimately easy to use. The other thing that I notice is in the front of the rifle, I've also got a half UNF thread that allows me to fit a silencer. I mean, <laughs> what is the chances of that? Who would have thought of that? So this is the first sort of um, breakneck rifle that I've seen where I can fit a silencer. Now, personally, I don't think it makes much of a difference because uh, I shoot my pellets at about 800 feet per second. So it's not like they, they're breaking the sound barrier for, for any reason. And most of the sound actually comes from the gas chamber. Um, you know, so when you cock this and you shoot, the sound comes from the gas chamber. It doesn't actually come from the pellet leaving the barrel, but it's still a nice thought that I can take my silencer that I use on all of my other rifles and use that on this rifle as well. The other thing that I just want to mention quickly is that I've got these Picatinny rails on both sides of the rifle. Now, you know, this might very specifically be um, utilized for a torch as an example, because just remember, this is a survival air rifle. So I might want to add a torch here so that, you know, when I'm scouring for hussies and dussies, um, that I can actually see what I'm shooting at. So for me, again, that is a lovely thought process that went into this rifle. Now let's talk about the shooting experience. So the first thing that I want to highlight is let's just look at the crony detail. When I shot this rifle, so I took 10 shots through my, my chronograph, um, I got a standard deviation of about 2.5. Now, that is insane. That refers to the consistency. I mean, my maximum spread from the lowest shot to the highest shot was only 8 feet per second. There's very many PCPs that don't give you that specific result. So, you know, when I saw that, I was like, mm, hang on, we're onto something here. So the second thing that we then started looking at is obviously how accurately does this shoot? And here you can see that I've got a target that was shot at 25 meters. I'll actually bring up the picture now as well. This is about 11 to 15 shots. I, I can't remember how many shots I ultimately took, but it was more than 10. And this is a two rand coin. So you'll notice if I take the two rand coin and I put it behind that target, it completely closes that target. How accurate is that for a breakneck air rifle? I, I mean, I was very, very impressed with this and, and you'll see the shooting video. I'll put that up now.
Okay, as you saw there, I even shot a little ram um, because my, I, I needed to use a holdover on my scope. Uh, you would have seen in that video that I shot this little ram also at 25 meters using this air rifle. So um, a couple of other things, let me just mention that quickly. Every time you cock this rifle, and the cock is very positive, um, I mean, you, you know, uh, if you actually go and, and hold this over in order to, cha to charge that uh, gas chamber, you can feel it. I, I mean, after a day's worth of shooting, I, uh, I knew that I wasn't 21 anymore. So, so you, you know, it's very positive. Um, you can feel that this is a solid, solid rifle. Now, every time you cock the rifle, it will engage the safety, which you can see here. So I need to take the safety and just move that forward. Very easy to do with my, my trigger finger. So, you know, it wasn't a hassle for me to do that. And because it's on the trigger, I never, not once forgot to disengage the safety. Sometimes on my HW97, you know, the safety sits on top here. And every now and again, I forget to uh, disengage that safety. Where this was pretty easy um, because immediately when I put my finger here, I know that that's in the way. I just move it forward and I start squeezing the trigger. Now on the trigger itself, I think it's quite important to mention that this has got a massive, massive first stage, which means that you can't squeeze the trigger from the start and expect to get an accurate grouping. So what I found I had to do was to engage the trigger to where it got stiff. And from there, I could then squeeze the trigger in order to get the shot off. Now, I never even checked if this trigger was adjustable. And no, it doesn't look that way. I don't see any screws that I can adjust there. So, you know, it's one of the things that you should be aware of because otherwise it will affect your accuracy for sure. If you think you're going to squeeze that trigger from the start until that, uh, that pellet breaks, it's simply not going to happen. You need to squeeze the trigger until you can feel the tension, get yourself on target, and then you can uh, squeeze through the shot release. So, so what are my final thoughts on this rifle? Now, if I look at this rifle, I love the way this looks. I love the way this feels in my hands. It is rugged. It is precise. Um, I love everything about what this rifle represents. Absolutely. Love the accuracy. I, I mean, uh, you, you don't get that kind of accuracy with 90% of the breaknecks that's out there. Um, just when I mentioned breaknecks, obviously you get Springer based breaknecks and you get gas chamber uh, based breaknecks. Um, this is a gas based breakneck, um, which means that it's got less points of failure uh, in the rifle itself. And, um, you know, that's also what gave me that consistency when I put this through the crony. So the only thing that I thought that they could improve on this rifle was ultimately the trigger squeeze. But again, you know, once I figured that out, it never prevented me from uh, getting a fantastic, fantastic grouping with this specific rifle. Now, what do I think about this rifle as a survival tool? Well, firstly, like I mentioned in the beginning, I don't think it's something that I'm going to carry around like a handbag. I don't see that happening, but I definitely will keep this in my backpack. I, you, you know, without a doubt, um, I'll use it for that. So, so, you know, so if you're looking for a breakneck rifle uh, in, in this price range, there is simply nothing else to consider. The Black Bunker BM8 is a fantastic air rifle in its own right. This isn't something that I would constantly break up, back away, 
extend. You, you know, I'll use this as an actual rifle that I practice with, that I shoot with, that I plink with, and ultimately on a farm go and hunt with. Also, one of the things that I forgot to mention is obviously this comes in a 4.5 millimeter as well as a 5.5 millimeter. Should you own this rifle? Bloody hell yes. Everyone should own one of these rifles. Now, I just want to end this review with a, a funny little part of this rifle. And that is the fact that you also get a bayonet for this rifle. Now, I don't know exactly who hurt uh, the people that designed this rifle in order for them to actually create a bayonet. I mean, they must have gone through some trauma at some point in time, but it's still bloody cool. So I've got a little slot at the back here um, and I've got a slot in the front. So I'm just going to go and open that up, slide this in. And there's my bayonet in place. Now, again, the more I played with these things, the more I realized all these little things that the guys thought about. So yeah, I can uh, cut, for example, fish gut um, if I'm fishing. And that's something that should go into your little kit as well. A little bit of fish gut. But you'll notice here in the front, I can actually go and open or close certain bolts. So I've got a 10 millimeter bolt, I've got an 8 millimeter bolt, and I've got a 5 millimeter bolt that I can use this bayonet or this knife in its own right to actually tie and untie. Where are you going to get that in the bush? I, I'm not exactly sure, but the fact that you can, I think, is awesome. Yes, and that is ultimately my thoughts on this Black Bunker BM8. I'll see you on the next one.